a, a, in the interests of science, okay? So bear with me. In the interests of science, I've cast on two new things. That's what we're going with. And welcome back to The Midnight Diary. My name is Gemma and I'm coming to you as always from my home in Devon. It's quite late on Tuesday evening. It's about 25 to 9. It's still daylight outside. The sun is setting and casting a golden glow over the trees that I can see through my window. It may mean that the quality of today's video is slightly grainy. So please do bear with me if that's the case. The last couple of times I've been worried about that, it's actually... Um... <laughs> so Mr... The other half just tiptoed in to give me the monitor for the baby. Um, the last couple of times I've been worried about it on my phone, it's actually translated just fine onto um, the actual kind of TV, the big screen, as it were. So I'm just going to say I hope it's all right. If it's not, we'll record at a better time next time. So welcome back. Uh, another fairly productive week. I've got lots of videos going on on the channel at the moment. Um, you may have seen a recent uh, summer sock camp update. So for that reason, I'm not going to dwell too much on the socks that I've been making. Um, I'm going to try and keep that mostly to the summer sock camp updates because otherwise you're just going to see the same thing over and over and also you might get a bit bored and you know. So if you're interested in the socks, go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. I have no finished objects for you this week, but it doesn't mean I've been less productive. I've continued this week with the Tiny Decisions app that I was talking to you about last week. Uh, it's working so well for me. I'm actually making so much more of the time I've got available to me to make. Um, so although I haven't got any finished objects, I have got lots of progress to share with you. Um, there may also be one or two new cast-ons as well. But we're we're calling it a, a, in the interests of science, okay? So bear with me. In the interests of science, I've cast on two new things. That's what we're going with. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you. Um, I, it's been so lovely having you pop up in the comments and to start conversations about our making. So thank you very much for engaging with that. If you do enjoy my videos, do feel free to hit the thumbs up, possibly consider subscribing. Um, it makes uh, my videos appear to more people and I just love chatting about all things making. So um, if you do feel that way inclined, please do, but absolutely no pressure if not. But thank you for everyone with your engagement and comments. It's been really nice. Um, so yeah. Right, so I said I'm not going to dwell too much on the socks I've been making. The only pair of socks I'm going to talk to you about this week um, are my middle of little DK socks. I just because I showed you this last week on the podcast, um, as I cast it on, I got about to there, I think. Um, I just wanted to show you the progress I've made. I've actually finished the first sock. Um, DK socks are definitely the way forward. They're so fast, a bit of almost instant gratification. And the second sock, I'm just starting the heel flap. So this is yarn that came from the middle of Lidl back in October 2023. Uh, the whole internet, and by the whole internet, I mean a couple of sock knitting groups on Facebook had just gone bonkers because Lidl has sock yarn, isn't this exciting? Um, so of course, again, in the interests of science, I had to go and purchase some and try it. So I've knit with the four ply so far. I knit a pair of socks for Jude and I really enjoyed my experience with that. And now I'm knitting with the DK. So there we are. Um, definitely feels a little bit more rustic than things like West Yorkshire Spinners and obviously much more rustic than a BFL or Merino nylon blend that you might get from a hand dyer. Um, but Nevertheless, very pleasant to knit with, lovely stitch definition, lovely colours, and I'm very much looking forward to having cosy toes in these later this year. So that's all the sock talk I've got for you. Um, next, it's garments. Um, I have put some work on the peanut vest, as I said I would. Okay, slight change of plan. I was going to talk about them in order of how I've worked them, but I'm conscious of the light and also my bag is full. So I want to um, I want to just pull them out in no particular order and chat about them. So first up is a brand new cast on that you haven't seen before. Can you guess what it might be? Yep, 
it's another flax. This is a flax worsted. Um, I'm actually using Colour Lab Aran from West Yorkshire Spinners, which is a new ish yarn. It's been out for just under a year. I was so excited to be able to order this for the yarn dispensary. Colour Lab is such a popular, popular yarn, and I just knew that this would fill a much needed, a gap that needed filling. Um, I love, it's got proper tweedy flex. It uses neps. The colours are a beautiful range of kind of warm, rustic colours and ones that are a little bit more vibrant. So I've got this, not because I've purchased it, because I haven't, I've been very, very good because I'm not meant to be purchasing yarn at the moment. I'm trying to use my stash. But I had the great pleasure of teaching my top-down sweater course at Wool on the X on Saturday. It was a full day course to my absolute delight and a little bit of intimidation it was fully booked. <laughs> um, so I rocked up and they were all there and eager and ready to go. And to my absolute delight, uh, the shop had provided everybody with a ball of Colour Lab Aran to use. Um, and I had some scrap yarn with me. I even had some of the Rowan that I'd used to make Robin's flaxes previously. Um, and so I had the needles expecting to be using that um, to just start a scrappy one. But uh, they very kindly said that I could play with some of the Colour Love Aaron as well. I was like, yes, please. Oh, guys, I am not disappointed. Yes, it's rustic. It's pure wool. Um, but it's so nice to knit with. It's really lovely. Um, what I will say is the fabric looks a little bit loose. But that's because I sized up my needles. The pattern calls for a four and a five. Um, but when doing the... Rowan superwash worsted versions of this. It's slightly thinner than an Aran, and so the yoke didn't measure, my gauge was wrong. Um, so I needed to size up to a five and a half to get the yoke to be the right depth and then everything else. So I just carried on knitting on the needles I had with me. I'm using Knit Pro Night and Day, which was a beautiful birthday gift from my boss, Vanessa, at the yarn dispensary. Um, she knew I was very keen on them, and bless her, she treated me for my birthday last year. I'm so lucky. <laughs> um, they're, they're great because it doesn't matter what colour yarn you're knitting with, you can still see your stitches. And unlike all the other Knit Pro needles, these ones have the sizes, I don't know if that's going to focus for us at this time of night, but it's got the sizes printed there. I've done a little bit of a needle review on that on one of my other videos, I don't know which one, but um, I won't go into too much there. So here we are, so here is my flax, I'm working down the yoke, that might not look like much to show for for a whole day's workshop, um, but I cast on with my students and then kind of supported them through their knitting and they all got, and I'll put a couple of pictures up of their um, tops. I haven't asked their permission to show their faces on my YouTube channel, so I shan't do that. Um, but I'll put a couple of pictures of their little jumpers they made um, up, up on there. It, they, oh, they were brilliant. Um, I actually did it wrong, couldn't figure out what I'd done wrong, and pulled the whole lot off the needles. Believe it or not. <laughs> so I had to start again. So this is my second flax. So there we are. So anyway, the pictures are going up now. They were amazing, my students. They ranged from fairly experienced knitters who'd never knit in the round before to fairly new knitters who were just excited for everything um, to knitters that had knit in the round but bottom up and done fair and all sorts of things like that. So I had a real range of people at the class, um, but we had a great day. Um, the one thing I need to do is make sure that people get off their bums and go and have a proper lunch break because everyone just carried on knitting um, and I think it was a little bit stiff by the end of it but you know sitting on a chair for six and a half hours without moving and just knitting will do that to you that's that's a hazard <laughs> um so yeah I have brought this home um because I was saying to Natty I said look I've started this ball of yarn now um it's not fair I keep it there's not a lot you can do with it shall I knit a first size shall I finish it off and then we can use it you can use it as a sample in the shop and possibly you know to promote the class should you want me to do this one again um so she said yes and I went ha ha uh, and so I skipped merrily home with my ball of color lab 
Um, yeah, so that is that. Very pleased with that one. Very pleased indeed. Uh, so yeah, there's no set deadline on this. I did say, you know, not with any expectation of having this in the next few weeks, mind. <laughs> They're like, no, that's fine. Um, so there we go. In fact, the way she sort of knew that that made sense, I wonder if she knows a bit more about my knitting than I thought. Hmm. Right, I've just tried to add a little bit more light into the situation. I'm not sure if that's going to make it more grainy, less grainy, but whatever, we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. Next in my bag is a new cast on. There's very little to show for this one, but we've gone completely different. So we've gone from a top down in the round Aran weight jumper to a bottom up knit flat and seamed. Yes, I know what I said last week that I don't know why I do this, but here we go again. Um, and this is in DK, so not quite four ply, but DK. And here we are, that's what I've got to show for it. Um, a kind of crinkly cast on. So what you do with this one, you can see the gaps there, I think. Yeah, so you cast on a lot of stitches and then you knit one, purl one, knit one, and then cast three off. Purl one, knit one, purl one, cast three off. Purl one, knit one, purl one, cast three off. Um, so yeah, and I've cast off differently this time. Um, I usually knit two stitches and then pass the first stitch over the second, knit the next stitch onto the right hand needle, pass the first stitch over the second, um, which is a fairly common, I think it's called the cable cast off, a fairly common way of casting off. But I have seen lots of talk in various forums about casting off by knitting two together, passing those two back to the left hand needle, knitting two together, passing those to the left hand needle. I thought, I wonder if this will be faster. So I tried it and it is faster. And actually I really like the results. I think they're really good. So we'll see what happens when I actually get into the body of the garment. You have to excuse what's happened to my pattern. It got caught out in the garden and the colours bled a little bit, which is a bit unfortunate, but there we are. So you can see it's this lovely, there we are, it's got a slightly frilly bottom, a um, bit of lace detail, raglan cardigan in DK. Um, it goes from birth to seven years, so actually I could have used this for my numbers for my chime cardigan, which I will share with you shortly. I'm using, it's a snuggly, Oh, no, it's four ply, not DK. Oh, is it four ply? It's four ply, not DK. Ignore me, I'm chatting nonsense. I couldn't have used it for my numbers for my chime. So I'm using Sirdar Snuggly four ply. It is 100% acrylic. Tell you what, the lighting and the kind of quality of the camera might look really grainy to me at the moment, but that is coming up a really nice true colour. It's kind of deep raspberry really pretty. Uh, so this is going to be for one of the babies, one of the baby girls. I'm not sure which one yet. We'll see. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm going to do two because I'm probably not. So this is the 0 to 6 month size and that's the back. It still looks rather huge at the moment, but that's because I haven't knit across the cast off stitches. Um, so yeah, there is that. So what, what happened was last time I shared with you that I put new cast on and I used it as an opportunity to start my cross stitch. Well, I was so far into the cross stitch and it kept coming up new cast on new cast and I thought, you know what, I'm going to swap it now. I've done a week, I'm going to swap it. I'm going to put cross stitch as its own thing because I had to take my mum's sock off because I couldn't do any more to that. And so I put cross stitch as its own thing and then new cast on and lo and behold, new cast on came up, which I think is a very justified reward because the chime that I did not want to really work on has come up so many times. <laughs> Sorry, my camera was doing that weird thing again where it doesn't match up with my face. So you might recall that I was saying at the end of the last podcast, I didn't really want to work on the chime, if I was honest. Um, and I feel like the Tiny Decisions app heard this and was looking out for my best interests, even if I wasn't, because the chime has come up time after time. It actually came up four times uh, in one evening. So I did uh, an hour and 20 minutes on it in one evening. Anyway, it's just as well because I totally wouldn't have worked on it otherwise. I've really enjoyed my time off when the app gave me something different, but look, 
I've completed the back. This is after I'd had to rip it out and do it again. And I am almost all, what is that? A bit of fluff. Uh, I've almost done one front panel. I've got um, one more. I've got to finish this gold stripe, blue stripe, and then I'm onto the raglan. So that is huge progress. And considering it's the 18th of June today, I've got until the 5th of July to do this. I'm on track, I think, especially if the app keeps giving. It might get to the point where I actually have to not just do the app and actually spend a little bit more time on this, but we'll see. So the chime cardigan, if you're not familiar, um, I'll flash up a picture of it again. It's by Martin Story. It was written for Rowan Bloom book, which is a bump to baby. And my friend, who is now my boss at Search Press, has a grandson born on the same day as my son, I knit this for my son, he wanted one for his grandson, but by that point the boys were too old, so I'm having to grade it. Oh my gosh, it's a little bit like the English paper piecing. I'm a little bit scared of it, I think that's why I've been avoiding it, because I could get it wrong. I've not graded a garment before. I've like done some of the prep work to grade a, to grade a garment. I've got um, a kind of tentative design that I've done in one size and I've started grading for another, but there's no pressure with that and I'm not giving it to anyone and I've got time to learn. But with this one, I've just got to go for it um, and it's been a bit scary. But I don't know, I shouldn't be too scared because, I mean, I've tried this up against, the beauty of it is they were born on the same day. So I've tried it up against the back of my son and this seems to be a really good fit. And also I've compared it to the peanut vest, which I'd started last week, I think I told you about which is double knitting weight, bottom up. Uh, and that says 10 inches to the underarms. And this is a raglan, so it's quite almost a bit of a deeper underarm, if that makes sense. Um, and this is nine and a half inches. So I think this will be fine. And I think also it will block out a bit longer as well, because it's quite heavy cotton. So there we are, lots of progress on my chime. We are getting through this here. The final... Um, project I have to share with you is ta da! There we go, the peanut. So it's almost at the point where I'm splitting for the front and back. So I'm still in the round at the moment. You can see this gorgeous yarn, which is James C. Brett. Oh, what is it? Oh, goodness. I'll put the name up here because it is completely escaping me at the moment. Um, but it's beautiful. I really, really love it. And I think this is just going to look so sweet. I'm definitely, so this is Robin's one. and I'm definitely going to do one for his cousin as well. Um, so yeah, it, it's got to get to 10 inches. And I think this is nine inches. So I've got one more inch to go. And then I'll be split, splitting for the front and back. So there we are. Uh, I really like the fabric, I like the way it knits up. It's got a lot of interest. There's not much in the way of pooling at the moment. I mean, holding it up here, it does look a bit more pooly, but in real life, it doesn't. But yeah, I would, I would recommend that. I really like that one. Stonewash DK. Could be James C. Brett Stonewash DK. Um, I'll either put a correction up here now, or I'll be like, hooray, I got it right. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, we'll see. So that is that. So all of these have been worked on as a result of uh, the app telling me to. Um, I've definitely been much more, much more constructive. Um, just looking around to see if I can see. Can't see. The one thing I can't see at the moment is my cross stitch, which I have been going great guns on. I'll put a picture up of where I've got to. But again, that's part of the 100 day project, which is another series of videos. And I don't really want to overlap too much. So I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, Robin is quite excited by it. It's Percy cross stitch. I was a little bit doubtful about the colours to start with but I'm really happy with them now and what was really nice is Robin saw me stitching and he wanted to help so um, he joined in with that and then got his own stitching out and he's actually starting to think a little bit about where he puts the needle so his first attempt it was and I've not got any of it to hand so I'm not going to show you but it will be in um, my second 100 day project video I know the first one isn't up yet but it's going to be in the second one um, so the first time he kind of just 
stuck his needle in random places, which is what you'd expect from a toddler. And I wasn't trying to correct him. It was just, we're having fun. We're experimenting. We're effectively mark making, but with a needle and thread. And it's obviously practicing spine motor skills and it's like exploring and being creative. Uh, so we just went with it. But actually this time he started really thinking about what color he was gonna use and about where he was gonna put his needle, which was so exciting for me. Um, and he really got a kick out of helping me. It was a little bit scary because my needle is very, very sharp. Um, <laughs> but we're going to go with that being risky play. And the risks were managed because me and Daddy were there. And I'm oh, sorry, Daddy and I were there. And uh, yeah, so th this is fine. But we did move him onto his own one. I need to get a plastic darning needle with a blunt tip um, because even my darning needle is a little bit too pointy for little hands to just be grabbing at. I couldn't leave him on his own to do that. Um, and the thing is, obviously, he's still also pulling it and pulling it right out and, and, the, and the thread comes out of the needle. So there's a lot of needle threading that happens. <laughs> But he's two. I'm not going to expect him to thread his own needle just yet. Soon, though. Soon. Um, yeah, so that's that. I think that's everything, really, that I've got to share with you this week. Um, as I said, I had the best time teaching at Wool on the X. I love, love, love teaching this craft. I love sharing it and... Um, and I learn things as well, you know, because everyone's got different skill set. And I just think that's great. Um, I would love to know what's something that someone's taught you about your craft that has been like a game changer or something you remember or something that's good. Um, for me, it's always one someone told me about wrapping the yarn around the needle the number of times for the number of stitches you need for the long tail cast on. That was a very long sentence and a lot of this. <laughs> um rather than guesstimating how much yarn you need for the long tail cast on. That is brilliant. I've actually got a two minute Tuesday video um, in my tutorials playlist that demonstrates that. So if you're curious as to the long tail cast on what I mean, go and check that one out. So that was one of mine that was a bit of a game changing uh, thing. The other one was when I joined a local knit and natter group when I first moved to Kent and they introduced me to the wonderful world of interchangeable needles. Um, what's up next for me? I'm dyeing yarn. I've had a big yarn order arrive and I'm gonna be dyeing kits for Mina, the Meeting ex Expats Designs, and she's gonna have those at Yarningham with her patterns. That's on the 13th and 14th of July. So just under a month, I've booked my coach. So coach the Birmingham sorted. So I'm gonna need your help thinking about, um, <laughs> thinking about, um, what projects to take with me for coach knitting. Uh, maybe it will be socks, who knows. And uh, yeah, so I'll be dyeing that. So what I'm dyeing tonight and tomorrow are kits for the Rainbow Wings shawl. So I will show you a picture of Mina's pattern here. Um, I'm putting a Midnight Diary twist on it. It's still gonna be a rainbow, but instead of being against cloudy gray sky, it's gonna be against my signature Midnight Navy. Um, I just think that will look really fab and it's my twist on her design. Um, Obviously her designs were all done with other dyes yarns and so the intention isn't to replicate that because, you know, creatively that's a no-no. It's to actually embrace these designs and give them my twist uh, in insofar as the kits. Um, so yeah, combining her designs with my yarns and I'm so excited for this opportunity. So I'll be dyeing that. So I've got 60 mini skeins soaking as I speak. I haven't done this many minis since I did my advents uh, and quite a few four ply sock yarns as well because I'm doing the main colour and I'm doing some sock sets to go with her sock patterns. So I will share those with you as they're dyed and dried. So this time next week, I'll be able to start sharing how the kits have come out, which is very exciting. Speaking about yarns, I have got my summer yarn basket. I shall set up a picture here. Um, I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail now because it is in my sock updates on a sock cap update um, which I put up on Sunday the video just before this one so if you'd like to see that basket and how I put it together please do go and check that out I have already selected my first yarn from it so there we are we've made a good start um yeah is there anything else to tell you oh yeah there's not gonna be any advents this year mm -hmm. 
I've decided not to do advent calendars this year. I was umming and ahhing about it. I thought I'd give myself some time, see how the land lay, give myself some, um, some time to think about it and to see how dying in my new space works. And I've come to the conclusion that this year it's just not possible. And I feel so much better for making that decision. I was all right not making the decision until now anyway because of PayPal's buyer protection window. I don't want to start uh, taking pre-orders outside of that window because obviously, you know, it's important that, that buyers are protected. Um, but I'm going to be doing my earliest teacher training from September. I'm going to be working more there's a lot of huge changes coming up and I just don't think it's sensible for me to take on something like an advent as well and also I do my best yarn dyeing when I'm enjoying it and if it's under pressure and obligation I that will bleed through into my work and that's not fair on any of you so I know there are some people who have been messaging me and asking are the advents being released when are you doing the advents I'm not going to do them and I hope that you uh, can understand that and that you're okay and uh, yeah I will keep you posted on my plans with regards to dyeing yarn as they evolve but certainly there's not going to be any major changes between now and Christmas so there we are get yourself to yarning and get some kits if you want my yarn what can I say <laughs> Right, uh, I'm going to go because the lighting is completely pants at this point. Um, I hope you are well. I hope you're enjoying your making. Let me know down below what you're working on at the moment. Um, did you work out the scientific reason behind me having three new garment cast-ons in the last week? Let me know, just for fun, what is the scientific reason that I've got the Serdar Snuggly cardigan, the peanut vest, and the flax. There's a mystery for you. Take care. Bye.